three, three, two, one, and action. Welcome to Get Your Popcorn Ready Podcast with my boy T.O. Just counted us down like the mm-hmm. Got my popcorn superstar ready. he is. We have a special guest today coming to you on the show. We have Nate Boyer, right? A man of many, many, uh, what, I guess, professions? You, oh, you've done it all, I brother. Professions. I be mean, professional. Professional, yeah. no, right? You gotta be a professional to call it a profession. I don't think I'm, a, I'm just, I try a lot of You try a lot, again, yeah. so movie director, ex-NFL player, played at UT, that, Texas, that's a dang near professor, profession I mean, right you, you now, playing Texas, college football. Like being a professional athlete. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Not the same. Not the same, <laughs> not the same, not the same. Not the same. It's, I mean, there is a lot of professional athletes coming out of there, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Very true, very true. But no, thanks for coming on the show, man. Of course, no, thanks for having me, y'all. I appreciate you know? it. So again, I know you, the, the big uh, big news right now in the, in the movie industry for us is right, your movie MVP that you directed. And of course, you know, we'll get kind of into the depths of, you know, how you got there. But uh, tell us a little bit on like um, MVP and what it's doing right now. Yeah, so MVP, the movie, it's, it's first of all, it stands for Merging Vets and Players. Mm-hmm. It's based on a charity uh, that I co-founded with Jay Glazer. And we bring together combat vets and former professional athletes, help them find purpose and identity when they lose a uniform. You know, a lot of, a lot of guys in the military, right? I think most people that sign up enlisted anyway, join at 18, 19 years old, mm-hmm. maybe do it till they're 23 or 25 or something like that. And you've got that, that uh, you know, you've got that uniform and that sense of purpose and the mission and the team and the camaraderie mm-hmm. and some high stakes and everything you're doing is like high octane, you know what I mean? Adrenaline. And then it's just over and trying to figure out who you are next, what you're going to do next. That's the story of a lot of pro athletes. A lot Absolutely. Of, a lot of guys who play in the league, you know, the average career is three years. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, so, so many of these guys and everyone's like, oh yeah, they make, you know, but well, they're, they're all millionaires. They all make a lot. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> guys, it's not even close to that. And they lose that team. They lose a the uniform, all the same things that, you know, we talk about with in the veteran community. And it's tough to move forward. It's tough to like leave that behind. A lot of these athletes go through something very similar when they lose that locker room, they lose a the uniform, they lose a the team. Um, and it's, uh, it's tough to move on and feel like you'll ever be great again or do mm. something as impactful as you did before because war and you know, playing professional sports, they're not the same thing, right. very different. But I'll tell you what, like there's a mutual respect between the two groups, like athletes look up to vets, a lot of vets look up to athletes. Absolutely. And you get them in the room and they start talking about those, you know, what they miss. And the number one thing is always, it's always the guys. And the, the camaraderie. Like, the camaraderie, the camaraderie yeah. right? Um, but after that, it's just like, you know, I just miss being a part of something that mattered. I mean, you go to a, you go to a football game, there's 100,000 people in the stands. It matters, you know? Yeah. People are like, oh, it's just sports. Yeah, but it's a huge part of our People's society, life, yeah. culture, like, when I was overseas on deployment, any chance I had, I was my escape was watching football. So right, right. I'd stay up, I'd get back from a mission, I'd stay up till 5 a.m. so I can watch Monday Night Football because we're like nine hours ahead, you know? Yeah, right, yeah, right. Right. Because it's like, that. I need that, you know? And I'm watching those guys and like, those are my heroes when I was a kid and it still kind of helps me get through it. So the organization was really about that, bringing those groups together and the movie is about the genesis of that. So essentially, there's a Marine living in a homeless shelter and Sunset based on Boulevard. a true story. Based on a true story, yeah. Based on real people. You know, it's Hollywood, so you have to make some adjustments right, and all right, that right. stuff to make it work into a film. But, you know, this Marine was uh, living in a homeless shelter on Hollywood, or excuse me, on Sunset Boulevard in East Hollywood. Um, he had attempted to take his own life three times, but somehow just kept surviving for a reason. And he meets an NFL player, first year out of the league. Guy was a first round draft pick, played a long time, um, but dealt with injuries and coaching changes and trades and just never on a winning team and felt like, man, I'm a bust. And the reality is, is like, he was, he was not a bust. You're still that That's 1%. Felt. <laughs> yeah. So these guys meet, on paper they got nothing in common, but they're going through the exact same. Same thing. The same thing, Struggle. exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Now, now, how did you meet that guy? How did you meet the, the Marine? So I, um, I came out here in 2015 to finish my, finish my degree. I did an internship at a, with Peter Berg, who's a filmmaker. He did of course, like Friday Night yeah, Lights, yeah, I know survival. Peter, yeah. And at the same time, I started training at Glazer's Gym, uh, Unbreakable Performance Center, mm-hmm. and him and some of his staff were just, you know, helping me put some weight on and try to make this run for the NFL yep. at the time. And 
Uh, I was introduced to a gentleman who used to be homeless and then he had ended up starting this place. It's called the Hollywood Veterans Center. Mm -hmm. And it's you know more of a transition house, I guess, than a, than, a, than a shelter, but it's like these guys that come back, a lot of them join the military coming from a really tough childhood or you know they were running from their life to the military and now they get out and they're coming mm -hmm. right back where they started with uh, feeling like they don't have the tools to, to move forward. And so they end up in this place. And so I went down there and visited and that's where I met, uh, you know, with that gentleman wow. and some of his friends. And they were the first ones who started coming up to the gym to train. Mm -hmm. And then Jay was bringing in athletes like Tony Gonzalez and Randy Couture and like, right, right, right. And it's like uh, such a, an interesting mix of people, but they're all talking about the same stuff. Right. But, but at, the, at the time, you're not a movie director, though. So how did you take right. his story and say, you know what? Hmm, I'm going to go make a movie, as you know how hard it is now, right? Yeah. Like, what was going through your mind of taking that story and making it into an actual film? Wow. Yeah, because yeah, I know, like, yeah, you, you mentioned Unbreakable, and I think that's where we kind of, you yeah. know, cross paths or what have you. And just that, that platform, and I think what Jay Glazer was doing, like you said, we, it was all different walks of life, but everybody's going through the same thing. Just, you know, you just don't really talk about it. So he brought everybody in and gave them a moment really kind of to share their story. And I think that's where everybody started to be like, man, you know, I'm going through the same thing. Just, you know, just different times, different, different professions or what have right. you. So I think essentially, you know, I think that's what Hatch is, you know, asking like, okay, well, well, how did this all come about? How did you know that, okay, this is where all of this is headed? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you know, you, you know, anybody that played, and it doesn't matter what accolades they had and all that, mm -hmm. you miss it, you know, you mm -hmm. just miss it. Same with the people in the military, you serve at the highest levels, you know, special operations and did some amazing things. And you know you come back, and the, you know, the things that stick with you are like, man, I, I wish I would have zigged instead of zag. Mm -hmm. You know, I could have done. And it's people are telling you like, yeah, but you, <laughs> you did all this incredible stuff, and you're like, yeah, right. that's great, but right. this is what this is what sticks with me. You know, mm -hmm. this right. is what I remember, and it's like it's a tough thing. Um, and one thing Jay always preached with with MVP, and when we started doing these huddles, is just like be proud of your scars, but also like remember who you are, and, and you know. And, 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 and all the good that you did. Like, how many people did you save? Not just how many mm. people, you know, didn't make it back in your mind because yeah. you could have done something different. Like, what, what, what about that part of it? Yeah, that's embracing of those it. scars. In, yeah, in, in exactly. A sense. And as people started coming into MVP and these stories, they started telling these stories about, it was like, in my mind, it started collect, they started collecting, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like thinking about all this, and like this, everybody's got a story. Every human being's got right. a story. Mm -hmm. But like, you hear some of these and I'm just like, man, like people need to, people need to hear this version of coming back home and like from these people's mouths. And a buddy of mine who was in, he was in, from the UK, but he's also a veteran. He served alongside a lot of American troops. He's a writer and he was like, he was like, man, this is a movie, I'm telling you. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, how did, what, what's the movie? And he's like, mm -hmm. it's about how it all started. Like, you know, meeting these guys at this shelter and then you've got this NFL player, you know, living in West Hollywood, different, different part of town. It's, you know, it seems very different, but they are, they're feeling the same things, thinking the same things. And, you know, let's, let's just try to figure it out. So we started, honestly, like, instead of writing, it was more like transcribing because they were telling the story. The right. story, I mean, right. You, Get like the you information said, you're collecting, first. You're yeah. collecting the data, you're collecting the information. And a, as these guys are sharing, this is like a meeting, meeting of the minds. And I think, you know, it, it's, it's so interesting that, like you said, all these guys that are sharing their stories and as athletes, I think you said something um, really profound is just like when you're going through like us as athletes like you can have you can seem like you have the world you know you can have great games big games but it's always like okay you go back and you try to ref you reflect just even on your career but just like individual games you can have like a good game but it's like those one or two passes that you dropped or got away think about that those more. are the ones that <laughs> eat at you so right. what you're really kind of essentially explaining is like these different persons, these di different people sharing their stories, it's something that is eating at them, even though they've had great c careers, you know, and, and, and great professions, like, okay, well, what is it that, that's, that's, that's making them so unique and, and, and sharing their story that's eating at them, that makes them feel like they don't, I guess, they don't, they they don't, don't have wanted. to be alone. Yeah, right. you're, you know you're, I mean? you're, not shared. You're, in shared, you're in shared space. I think, right. And, and the more I've thought about it over time, too, I think that's part of 
greatness, honestly, mm -hmm. because people that accept mediocre or even Mediocrity. like pretty good, right, right, you know, like oh yeah, I was pretty good. Like, to someone that's elite, that's it's never that's it's never right, good. Right, right. Good is not good enough. You know right. I mean? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't. Yeah, no. Unless it was perfect, that's that's when it was acceptable. Yeah. And I think, you know, high level athletes, elite athletes, and uh, and a lot of veterans. Not and not everybody. Not every athlete. Not every veteran. But I think there's just certain people that are always looking. You know, searching for how can I be a little like one percent better? Or what could I have done? Yeah. You know, I want to fix this. I want to um, I want to improve on this. I want to be a I want to be a better, uh, a better leader. I want to, I want to have, uh, you know, I want to be one step quicker, yeah, or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that mentality, you know, when you, especially when you transition out and you don't have the opportunity to, mm -hmm. to, to play that game anymore or, you know, to deploy anymore like that. Like how can you do that in life? It's tough. That's the question. It's tough to replicate, you yeah, know, to yeah, find yeah. things that, that feel like that because you feel to me, and I'm sure, I'm sure you guys both both to, to att can attest like that those big plays, that big game, like nothing, nothing compares to that feeling. Yeah. To so score a touchdown and eighty thousand people, scre you know, screaming for you, like there's nothing that can take that feeling away. You just have to figure out there's other things to get that feeling, but you're not going to get that exact feeling. Right. Like exactly. that's the case. Exactly. Yeah, and that's the, that's kind of the one of the things we really preach is like, because it because sometimes it's it's doing that. Um, by being a, by being a better father, you know what I mean. Right, yeah. Sometimes it's finding professionally, like what else? I'm, I'll never get the same. I'll probably never have that same adrenaline. Right. Well, maybe not. Maybe you will. Right. But whatever that is, like what, what challenges can I find that that you know? So for so something? for you, just like that emotional high. Like if you yeah. scored a touchdown, you know, interception or whatever, big tackle, whatever. Maybe the the biggest moment uh, in a game. What what is that for you? What replicates that for you? Whew, that's a good question. Um, first of all, I was a long snapper, so. <laughs> right, the but best, again, the but best <laughs> snap ever. Right, but <laughs> what's but the exactly, best snap ever right, for but you? Exactly, so, but a lot of people, may, they may not understand that because everybody, right, everybody doesn't get the pressure of a snap. Right, everybody doesn't get the glory. That, it's just yeah. like the lineman. Nobody really knows the lineman. They don't, they don't understand, like for a lineman, uh, for a lineman, I'm sure, to get a pancake or pick up a blitz on a, on a certain play, mm -hmm. that's that, that's mm -hmm. that exhilaration. The perfect for, snap on a game when he field Right, so for you, for something like a kicker or whatever what is that for you like I said for a long snapper like a lot of people don't know that's a good like what what is an emotional high for, yeah, for, yeah, for you a snapper <laughs> you, you know what when I'm it saying? doesn't go over his head <laughs> right <exactly. laughs> I think, no I mean honestly yeah because it is it, it is very different but you know when you're back I love the I love um, what's the word austere is not the word I'm looking for um, just the uh, huge obstacles right mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. Say you're up two with a minute left, and you're backed up on your own goal line, fourth mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. You, and, and you cannot snap the ball over <laughs> his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also, they can't end up. They Scoring. can't end up. Mm -hmm. They got to be at least a midfield. Right. You know yeah. I mean? exactly. Can't be short be, field. Can't be, be short field. Can't be short field. And, and the punter can't right mess there, around. Yeah. And the punter can't step out of out of the end zone either. Those little things. So like you, you go back there. And I'm feeling all those nerves, you know what I mean? That's the feeling. feeling. Yeah. That's people what, yeah. are like, wait, you never got nervous. You got, sh you know, you've been shot at in Afghanistan or whatever. I'm like, dude, I got nervous. I got very nervous because those guys next to me, like, I don't want to let them down. You know, right, I, right. it matters to me. And like, the, you know, the, the, the fans, the whatever, the university when I was at Texas, it's like this, I, ca I care because like, if, if I make that mistake, first of all, you know, we all know the long snapper. You ain't gonna get the glory if it goes good. Right. But if you go, if it, if it goes sideways, you definitely right. get cut. Like, if you if you, <laughs> you snap ain't get the glory, over, but you, you definitely get cut. Right. Your name is gonna get in the paper for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> <laughs> you snap it to the right, too far right. to the right or to the left, mm -hmm. or over his yeah. head. Everybody's gonna know who Nate Boyer is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, it's like yeah, I'm just sitting up here thinking like, okay, well, what could a, a snapper be really known for? Like I said, other than okay, yeah, the you long snapper. You don't want snapper. him to be known, right? You don't want <laughs> but again, it could be. You could be honestly. I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about the game you could make a game saving tackle sure. true. as a, as a snapper true. too you know, as, to be quite honest yep. so yeah. have you have you done yeah. anything I, equivalent I, no no game saving tackles mm -hmm. but you know what i caused a lot of fair catches there you so go I'm proud of that. first one down <laughs> first right. one down. Yeah. Okay. because in college you don't have to wait till it's punted you can cross line of scrimmage as soon as you yep. snap right. it's a different rule so like you know you're essentially the third gunner if you're the snapper unless you have a blocking responsibility for whatever reason mm -hmm. and so like that was my whole thing like Get it out. Make sure you know. Snap first. Finish that snap. Make sure it's perfect, and you're setting that punter up for success. Mm -hmm. 
and then just just run as fast because I I'm not gonna tackle that dude in open space. You know right, I mean? right, if, right, right. If he receives it and I'm not right on him, right. there's no tackle happening. Right, but if right. I get up within five yards, he's gonna throw the hand up. Yeah, and that's, yeah. That's a big win for me. But you know, I just remember thinking of that like that goal line situation. We had one of those when we were playing. The, I think we were playing Kansas State or West Virginia or something mm -hmm. on the road. Mm -hmm. One of those things, and you know, I'm I'm out there. I'm feeling all those nerves, but I know I've got to get it in this. Kind mm -hmm. of this one foot by one this foot box. space, yeah. fifteen yards away. That's not. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's hard to turn around. And throw with a your head into that. down, with, you know with I mean? hanging upside down you're like a bat. Down, <laughs> you, know, you got to spiral. Your sweat. Your hands are sweaty. You got people, you know, talking crap on the other side of the ball. Like all that stuff's going on, and of course that little voice in your head is like, "Don't screw it up. Don't yeah, screw it up. Yeah. You got to like ignore That's it, a moment. It and focus on. So I would always focus on something like crazy small. Like if it was a field goal snap, remember my holder had a little. Nike check on his glove, mm -hmm. so I would just like just hit the check. I would just, just hit the Nike that check. check and nothing else. And you you still hear this stuff, but I'm just like, ah, you know, right. Focus like, in. It's kind of like that you receive for love of the game, Kevin Costner. Yeah, is absolutely. The and he's yeah. like, clear the mechanism. Is his whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And he could just focus on that little dark spot in the catcher's mitt. You know, and that's it's awesome. Like, that's all I need to see. Same kind of thing. So that kind of focus is honestly very similar to when I was learning to. Shoot a pistol. I'm about to say shoot a gun, it yeah, seems yeah, like. Yeah, we learned yeah. to shoot a pistol, and it's like, I'd never really sh you know, shot guns growing up. And it's like, I'm doing that, and it's like, I gotta stare at this front side post, and then I gotta see the target down rage. I gotta match these up, and it's all happening very right, fast. Right. And, you know, in a situation where you're overseas, there's potentially. Your life is at danger. At you, right, you know right, right. I mean? It's tough, but like, you have to clear all that stuff and just focus on that one thing, you know, one thing at a time. But well, what's in front of you, right, right. So that's what, that's why, I mean, because I never. I don't know if you know this, T.O., but I never, I never played football growing up. So I, I definitely never long snapped. I started right. long snapping when I was 31, like after the man. Well, wow, how old were you when you got to Texas? 29. You were 29, 29. Wow. freshman at the University of Texas, about to walk on, yeah. play the football. Oldest, the, was, was you, were you the oldest freshman? Oldest, pro probably the oldest freshman in Texas history. Definitely oldest, oldest rookie in, that, that had an opportunity in the league. Right, at the Seattle the Seahawks. Right. Right. right back when they had. Right. You know, some older cats. Right. Like so ago. when you when you when you went to Texas, like what was that feeling like? Because of course everybody's gonna be like, what the heck is he doing? Too old, too whatever your dreams chasing, whatever yeah, yeah. you're doing. What are you doing here at Texas trying to play football and how do you overcome like all the chatter, if you will, on the outside? I mean, I first of all, like because it's not like you picked a Division three school. No, no, no. You know, you didn't, you didn't pick Honestly, Mountain Union or lying. Youngstown State. Was, you picked I Texas. I was considering doing that. <laughs> and my buddy, who unfortunately, he passed away in 2012. But in 2009, we were in Iraq, and he, he was the one that was like, because I was saying, I want to go try and play football. He was a guy, he was like my confidant. And I was like, this is something I want to do. I want to go to college, but I think I'm going to try and play football. I never played and I regret it because it was my favorite sport growing up. It bothered me. I was a huge Niner fan, you know, and I'm like, I grew up in you know, some of these dynasties and these legendary players. And, and it just like, it bothered, it just bothered me. I'm like, why did I never just go do it? Some you think little, about every single day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I was real little, my, you know, uh, my mom, she always, she denies this, but it's true. <laughs> At least I felt like this. I, like, she didn't really want me to play until I was, you know, a little older. And then once I got older, I just, I wasn't a great athlete. So it was a lack of confidence. It was like. I'm playing baseball, I'm playing basketball. Same with him, he I'm wasn't a great athlete either. But I had confidence, that's the difference. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, I, wanna, I don't wanna lose my starting spot on, yeah. on the basketball team, on the baseball team, or yeah. whatever. So I can't, I can't put energy, energy into something else. Like, it'll, what if it doesn't work out, then I got nothing. Mm. So I didn't do it, and it just stuck with me, right? So finally, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna try it. If I don't make the team, it's okay, right. Life goes right. On. Right. You gave it your best yeah, shot. Yeah, so I got there, and I was in good condition from the military, so I had endurance. And of course, when they're looking for scout team players, they just want somebody who's going to get up. 100% every again. day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. just like uh, Coach Aquino, our DB coach, who's at mm -hmm. Stanford now, he used to say, just get run over with dignity. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> you go over. get run over, yeah. you might as well get run over, get with, get dignity. run over with dignity. Just bounce yeah. up, you know, and like they're going to respect that. And then mm -hmm. who knows? Maybe, maybe you'll get you find a way on the special teams or something. Yeah. So I walked on as a safety. There's no way in hell I'm covering, you know, much less a TO. Right. College receivers, you know what I mean? Right, like right, just, right. Yeah. Even them. I, I can't keep up with those guys. Yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. I just can't do it. And so the writing on the wall was very clear right away that uh -huh. they're going to be playing safety at Texas. Right, right. So right. I was like, all right, what special teams? What can I get on? And I was like, you know, I back up on 
pump block and kick kick return or sorry kickoff team and all mm -hmm. that. But still, it's just a lot of it came down to just athleticism. Speed, speed, speed. Yeah, yeah. I, just didn't, I just didn't have it. So I was like, what you know? What else is there? The starting long snapper and the backup were both seniors. Mm -hmm. I was like, hmm. mm -hmm. I used to pitch in high school. I got a pretty right. good arm. Let me just try this out. So yeah. I spent a couple months just messing with it, you know, and I actually went overseas that summer. I was still, in, we talked about it earlier, I was still in the National Guard. So I went to Afghanistan for about three and a half months, but before my junior and senior year in college. Okay. And when I went over there, I also brought a couple footballs with me and just That's all you had a little do, yeah. target out of plywood and just wow. practiced every day. You know, as wow. Any th if I had How many hours minutes, you think you did it over in like a month? Man. I mean, pro of snapping and over the three months I was there, I'd say at least a hundred. You wow. know what I mean? Like, it was a lot. That's this a is lot like a movie right here. That's what I'm saying. That's in what I'm itself, trying to get at. I'm this, like, is, this, this is next. This right. Is, you <laughs> know what I mean? This is like the MVP in the making. Yeah. Part, part two. Part two. Part two. <laughs> <laughs> the prequel. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah. Because what, cause what we're trying, again, we, of course, we always talk about transitions on this show, right? Yeah, we all, right. But we're also trying to get the point across. You can go do anything. You just have totally. to be willing to put forth these hours and have some type of work ethic and who cares about the outside chatter, but you've made yourself into yeah. a division one football player, right. regardless of position, right? And then you made yourself into a professional football player, right? You, so you get picked up by the Seattle Seahawks. And at, at a later age. You know at a I mean? way they, later age. Right. What, was you 47 at the time? Because <laughs> everybody now, they wants to put, you know, they want to put a cap on people's ability based on their, their age. On right. their age. Not your age, but since they're 48 right. and you're 48, they can't do what I can't do at 48. Like, no, it's not the same. we're not the same people. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, it's, it, 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 you're totally right. I mean, I think most of the limitations people generally put, are, are, they're put on by, they put, the, they put it on themselves. Yeah, yeah. Mentally, their own yeah. limitations on you. Societal, yeah. you know, yeah. pressures or whatever. And a lot of it is society, too. Absolutely. You know I mean? yep. Yeah, they tell you, you, you know, you, you, you're not supposed to do, you're supposed to be, you're supposed, by this age, you're supposed to do this. have your degree. Right. You're supposed to be married. Right. You're supposed to have kids. Right. You don't this, do this age, age yeah, you're, you're supposed to be six you're feet a under. Failure. Yeah. <laughs> you like, know what I mean? You're, 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 mm. you're, right. You're late to the party or whatever. Right. It's, like, right. it's, it's BS. It right. is totally BS. Because if I would have, if I would have tried to do these things at 18, 19, even early 20s, I would not have made it. I wouldn't have been ready. I didn't have this part yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. the belief in myself like mm -hmm. that I now had. So regardless of maybe your athletic prime, maybe yeah, maybe I was a, a step faster at that time. It doesn't matter. Right. It's, it's, there are all these other factors mm -hmm. that I didn't have together, and I wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been the right time for me. There's just no way. I probably wouldn't even have tried. So know? of the things that you've uh, attempted, what is the most? Ch what has been the most challenging or the most difficult thing that 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 you've attempted, uh, that you have achieved? Because like the Green Beret, you know, football. Now you're doing movies. I mean, you try to. You was a Actor, to be a firefighter, you but you didn't finish. You quit as a firefighter. So yeah. what was it about being a firefighter that made you quit? I, I was, I did, lack of self-belief. Didn't think, like, I started thinking, I, I, what I started thinking about was, because I was, I was 18, 19 when I was doing it, and I was like, man, I'm going to have people's life in my hands. Mm -hmm. And that's like, why I, I, I because I, mean? I, like, I, I was reading I'm this about you. That. I'm not, I'm not. Not ready for that, that responsibility. I can't do that, you know? Right, but this, what's so fascinating about this is that you thought that about the lives of people Others. that you potentially mm -hmm. may have to say, but then you go in, you deploy, you enlist in the service, and essentially you're doing the same, you're, you're, you're kind of doing the same, lives, you're, yeah. you're saving lives, you're doing the same thing. So what, what, is, what was the difference? I was it maturity? I know because you remember you just, you mentioned you were 18 at that time. So do you think it was a maturity? I, I think it was just giving myself reasons to believe, right? So here's an example. I always had, or not always, but I often have a lot of passion for something in life, dreams that I want to pursue. And then I start to like look into it and I talk myself out of it. Or I just think like, ah, you know, I'm not, I'm not the right guy for that. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough, whatever. And then, um, so for the, yeah, for the, for the firefighting piece, I just was like, man, they, these, these are grown ups. <laughs> I mm -hmm. feel like a child, you mm -hmm. know? And I feel like, I having that kind of responsibility in my hands, I, I can't do that. But I still wanted to do it. There was still a part of me that was like pulling me, you know, like this is, this is who you want to be though. Like, so you got to figure this out. And eventually, um, a few years after that, 
9-11 had happened, and I didn't join the military right away, but I was kind of thinking about it. And then I went over and did some relief work in the Darfur for about, about uh, two months. And so this is you know, the border of Chad and Sudan in the midst of this genocide. And all I was doing was like, you know, helping pass out food rations, playing soccer with the kids, helping build campsites, like simple stuff. But I was part of something where it felt like we were making a difference, potentially saving lives. And a lot of the people there were just grateful for me doing this. And I was like, man, I, I do belong here. Like I do, I, I can do this. I am, I am good enough and worthy enough, you know, valuable enough to um, be, of, be of service and like make a difference. Mm -hmm. And so at that point I sort of gained the confidence or like I said, like gave myself a reason to believe that I could be, I could be a Green Beret, you know, cause there's a, there's a humanitarian piece to that job as well. I'm like, I can do this and I want to continue to fight for people like this. So I came home and I was like, all right, once I sign on, on that line, that's kind of the person I am. Like once I commit to it. And then there's I no end, backing, no, there's no going, going back. back. You know, right. if I get cut, I get cut. If right, I don't make right, it, right. as long as I know I did everything I could, Mm. then I can live with that, you know what I mean? I can move on. Mm. Um, just, like a, just like a football game. You did everything you could. Losing still sucks. Right. But you know, that, you know, you did, I, yeah. I did everything I could. Like, you can live with that. If, right. you, if, you, if you didn't, you right. know, if you felt like... So, so you, I, see, you, you know. seem like the type to put a lot of pressure on yourself, right? <laughs> That's, I'm fault. just getting that, it's, you know. It's, just, it's bad. It's, so yeah. what was more pressure? That first day of training camp with the Seattle Seahawks or first day of shooting your movie as the director? Ooh, that's a great question. Take military out of it. Right. Yeah, that's a good question. I think the movie was more pressure. I, really? I, you know wow. what, like, I was sort of, I understood, first of all, in Seattle, I was 34, I was the oldest dude on the team as a rookie. I mean, look at me. I was, I was a heavier, but I'm not a big dude. Right, right, right. And I knew I was up against it big time, and I was, honestly, for me, every day I got to go out there and practice, and I got to play. That was the win One preseason game, I was like, I'm here. Like, <laughs> I did this. Anything else is just, it's gravy on top, and I'm going to keep working and, and trying, of course, until the, until the day, you know, poor John Schneider had to walk up to me and say, yeah, yeah. brother, you know? <laughs> bring, bring, yeah. bring your playbook. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, I, I got to shout him out. I just saw him yesterday up in Seattle. Like, That's awesome. You know, he's a GM up there. He's a, he's a great dude. Yep, you know, good dude. Really good good relationship. dude. But, um, but, you know, but until, in, in, until then, it was just like those five months I was there, every day was just a, a blessing. I was so grateful. Mm -hmm. Now, with the movie, I was very, I was, I was afraid to screw it up, mm -hmm. tell our story wrong, let people down. Um, I mean, most of the people working on this thing were veterans and athletes, like the crew, mm -hmm. almost all vets. Every vet portrayed on screen is played by a veteran. Most of the athletes are played by actual athletes. Mm -hmm. And so these people who are studying acting and like that's what they want to yeah. do and are good, yeah. they, it, it's also like they're telling their own stories. It's very personal to all of them, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I was like, the pressure of that, like if I, if this Don't screw up their through, story. this yeah. looks like it doesn't look good or mm -hmm. doesn't feel authentic. It's gonna come back on. Yeah, the audience you know, will like, know. Who made this movie? Oh, Nate, Nate Boyer made this movie. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, he, Off he, with his head! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that pressure, was, that was, that was, that was yeah. terrifying. Because That's crazy. it's like, you, you're, yeah, you're making movies and people are like, oh, you're just making movies. It's not, it doesn't, it, it's all good. But it's like, like, if it's a story like this, it's not all good. Right, it, it's right. It's important. And, and a lot of people are gonna see it. And a lot of veterans are gonna see it. And athletes. And I want them to, I want it to resonate with them, you know, and for them to be like, Everybody's going to have a different opinion, but at least for, for them at some level to be like, that's, that's it's respectful. That, that's, yeah. that's accurate. Like, right. That's my story. Right. You know? So again, you had some big time athletes in it, right? Strahan was in it, Tony Gonzalez, um, Glazer, right, yeah. made his appearance in it, of course. Now, taking the athletes, right, working with them as a director and then directing actors, right? Was there anything different there? Because that's a question we're always asking as doing on camera stuff because we haven't done this for 20 years, like you said, but a lot of these actors out here in LA, they've yeah. been doing it for 20, 30, 40 years, and they have a certain perspective, right? Mm -hmm. We're just so confident, we get on camera, we feel like, give me a line, but uh, I'll deliver it. Might not be the right delivery, but we'll deliver it with confidence, right? right, right? right. What did you find difference between working with the actors and the athletes? I think the big thing with the actors was, and first of all, like they were all, I got lucky with who we, who we, I don't want to say ended up with because right. we didn't like end up. Like, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're <laughs> yeah. working, they're on, they're series regulars on big series and yeah, you know, making yeah. movies and doing all this stuff. And, but so for them, I, 
I quickly saw like, first of all, this is a different level of professionalism and confidence, just them around. So mm-hmm. for me, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna let them do their thing. And mm-hmm. if we need to make adjustments from there, but I don't wanna over coach, you know what I mean? If you, mm. I'm not gonna coach Terrell Owens, you know what right, I mean? Like if, right. I'm, if, I, if I'm going out there on the field, he, you know, he's on my team, I'm like- Just throw him the slant, yeah, don't coach up like, the slant. He's gonna do his thing. Yeah, yeah. And if, but if there is something that's just like, definitely just not working, or I really like, can we just try this? Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll say it, you know, mm-hmm. of course. And they were all always, you know, very open to that. Mm-hmm. But many of the times, uh, there was nothing I needed to say. Mm. You know what I mean? They just, they, they got it and they were adjusting off to what, they were adjusting off on their own to mm. what was happening. Like kind of letting the game come to them. You know what I mean? They're like, okay, I see what this is. And they would kind of work it. Cause they just, mm. they've been in, they've been in a hundred things. For the athletes, I think some of them, especially the, them with a little less of the acting experience and the vets as well, I'll group them all together. Right, that's it was right. very yeah. similar. Yeah. Um, sometimes it was a matter of them trying to be respectful of the script and like word for word, this is what's written, I need to say it, and this is how I interpret it, so I need to say it this way. Mm-hmm. And I would stop and be like, don't worry about the words. You are way more interesting. Yeah, don't worry I'm about real. the words. You know, yeah. 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 Right. way more interesting in this character you're trying to play. Yeah. Just be, just be, be you. Deal. You know what I mean? Just right. be, just be Matt, just be yourself. Yep. And uh, don't worry about it. Like, just tell your own, especially when it was like, Tony Gonzalez and Randy Couture, there was a scene where they're telling their own story about, you know, losing the uniform and, you know, Tony was, you know, obviously 17 year, one of the best tight ends yeah. to ever do it. Yeah. Randy Couture, six time heavyweight champion of the world, mm-hmm. but they still felt like Randy's, ne- Randy never made the Olympic team and that's like his regret. Mm. You know, Tony feeling like he peaked, you know, in his late thirties and just like leaving the game, even though he had the broadcasting opportunities, he just felt like I- I'll never be great again. And that mm. sucks. And they opened up about that and I'm like, just tell your story. Just tell us that. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about the script. Like I wrote the script based on what you have said in this room because you've told the story before. Just tell the story again. In mm-hmm. your own. And once they did that, there's more authenticity there than any actor could, could write. Yeah, right. it's just, right. it's just yeah. very real. So, yeah, it was just it's just a different kind of a different approach in communicating, but um, and vulnerability too, just to be able to open up well on on camera. Yeah. That's that's hard. That's that's hard for for anybody. I mean, not just you know. Athletes, it it yes. seems like especially athletes like we're like you know we'll open up on camera, but when you really put that camera on, you say action. <laughs> you're like, well, I'm gonna say this, but I'm not gonna let them know this. That that thought process of saying I'm not gonna let them know this. That's what you should be opening up about. When I when I hear somebody give a presentation or speaking engagement, right, and I can tell what they're telling me, they've said that exact same thing, exact word for word throughout right. mm-hmm. a thousand times, they lose me as mm-hmm. an audience member. But when I can tell, even when they're, you know, of course they're telling the same story over and again, but I can tell that it's not scripted and it's mm-hmm. just coming from their heart. And maybe, maybe it's a they- connection. Yeah, they go off script or something adjusts from mm-hmm. whatever they were gonna say. And you, you can feel that, like, mm-hmm. you know, people, we don't, give it, we don't get enough credit for being smart audience members, just generally people, right, you right, know, like right. they, I think a lot of times Hollywood and other, mm. they, they think they know what we need to hear and see. Um, and for me, like the number one thing I need to hear and see is that, is this person, are these like real thoughts they're thinking, right. they're feeling, you know, this actor or whatever, like, is this real or is this like, are they, are they, they're trying to make this expression right. so that I, they think they're going to make me feel something. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't, like, yeah. That's the wrong like, reason. Oh yeah. That's the, that's a sad face. <laughs> No, but if it says be sad. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's I, not it. Like it needs to be. I need to. I want to be like. What? What is that? Like when somebody says, um, somebody asks, you know, how you doing, and the answer is like, you know, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm good. Yeah. And you can right. tell they're masking it. It could be a hundred different. You know what I mean? It yes. Want to ask a follow up like, are you sure you're good? Yeah. That, when it comes to like acting, when there, when there's that, there's like that real thought behind what's said. Yeah, I think, I mean, yeah, it's just, just uh, like I said, vulnerability. I think it's transparency and I think authenticity. Mm. And I think, you know, obviously speaking of authenticity and, and some of what I feel like we as a country has experienced, I think a lot of people don't know, I'm getting to my point, um, <laughs> of really kind of, they don't know, nobody knows that, I was that you played with Colin Kaepernick 
and what he did mm. in kneeling for the national anthem when it was so frowned upon, mm -hmm. you were one of the guys that advised him to take the knee. Instead of? Instead of sitting for the national anthem. Major. What went into your thought process? Because again, you're a white man. You've never experienced what Colin was trying to Portray, convey. Yeah. And for you, obviously, like I said, this is, that moment is iconic. It's, it's a big moment in history. What went into your thought process of giving him that advice? Well, like, I was, so I was with the Seahawks just the year before, right? Mm -hmm. And I grew up a huge Niner fan. Um, I had a workout with the Niners, you know, the year before, well, right before I ended up signing with the Hawks. And so I had that opportunity, you know, I had to try out with the team, so I got to be around the team and like work out with them. And I remember being up at, up at Levi's and just like, man, I want to go here. I want to play here. This would be, mm -hmm. you know, as long as it lasts, yeah. I would love this. It ended up, ended up not working out and I'm, I was grateful that, you know, I had that opportunity with Seattle. But I'm always a Niner fan, I always yeah. will be. That's just who I am. And I remember Cap, when he was at Nevada, um, I think they had this big game. They beat Boise State when they were kind of at their peak. And I was like, who is this dude, you know? And he's just, he's just a different kind of athlete. Mm. And just a different dude. I mean, he looks different, he plays different. He's just mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. and, and then the Niners take him, I think, in the second round. Yep. And of course, they had Alex Smith, who was you know, first pick in the draft. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and Cap, in the preseason, that first year, and he's going in, I'm like, they gotta figure out at least some packages for this guy. Like he needs to be right, on the field. Right. He's explosive. Right. Just he's got this, you know, this arm. Like it's just, it's just, it's just different. And we needed a spark, you know, mm -hmm. at the time. I was just like, man, that'd be, that'd be nice if somehow they figured that out. Well, then you know, Alex got hurt. Cap got his opportunity uh, eventually, and you know, the rest is history. There, they led him to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Should have won it. <laughs> but it's all good. It's not on him. <laughs> it just didn't happen. Um, but, and then the next year, back to the NFC Championship again, you know, just like, all of a sudden the Niners are relevant, and it's just like, this is my, you know, this is my guy. Right, right. And fast forward a, a couple years, and uh, this is during the election, Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump, our country's like already just going like this. Right, right. Nobody listened to one another, and um, people are just disrespectful, and you know, not, um, not appreciative of somebody else's story, and, and perspective, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And all of a sudden, it's during the preseason, one year after I was you know, playing in that preseason, and, and I'll say real quick, the, the one game I played in Seattle, preseason game, but I led the team out of the tunnel with the, with the American flag, um, just like I did in college. I stood on the sideline during the anthem, I started crying, because like for me, in my experience, it's just a different connection to the Absolutely. You know right, I mean? yeah, and that's why, that's, a, that's why, yeah, that's why I wanted to go, and it's right. Like, before the military, honestly, I didn't feel that way. Like, right, of I still course. put my hand on my heart out of obligation a little bit, but mm -hmm. I didn't really feel a sense of pride, to be honest. Um, but now it's like I'd carried my best friend in the casket draped in that flag. So mm -hmm. for me, it is just a different. Hit different. It hit very different. Mm -hmm. And so then the anthem, you know, um, it, it, this is 2016, the next year. Mm -hmm. You know, the NFL teams are out on the field during the anthem. Um, for every game, as we all definitely know now, if you didn't before. Right. And Cap is sitting on the bench. He'd already done it for a couple of games, I believe. And a reporter eventually asked him, like, are you, like, is there a reason you're kind of, you know, sitting back here? And he was just like, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's officers getting paid leave mm -hmm. uh, after these, uh, these situations where unarmed, you know, black people are being, are being killed. And I, I don't want to stand for the flag of a country that oppresses black people and people of color. Mm -hmm. And you know, he straight up said that. And I remember initially seeing that statement because that was the only piece they took out of this 18 minute interview. Of course. They took that of out of context. Yeah. Yep. So I see this like, and to me, I'm like, well, the whole country doesn't do that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it like initially kind of like just hurt me because I was like, the overseas, like what this flag represents to a lot of people is hope and all these other things. And then I went back and I watched this whole 18 minute interview and he talked about a lot of things. He talked about, first of all, his respect for men and women in the military mm -hmm. and what they do. Mm -hmm. And when I got the further, the full context of what he was talking about, it was essentially what I got from it. 
because I don't want, obviously I'm not, I'm going to speak for you. Right, you can't speak What I got from it was right. like, until things change and improve and we are making, and I feel like there's a concerted effort to fix this issue because it is a real issue, I'm not going to stand. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm not going to stand in the anthem because I don't feel that sense of pride mm -hmm. um, the same way that other people do. And I could respect that because I was like, first of all, when I joined the military, we all put our, we all raise our right hand, we take this oath to defend the Constitution, which mm -hmm. includes the First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Which is part of he's it. He's exercising. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. Is he doing it disrespectfully? Some people, that's their interpretation. But after listening to that interview, I was like, I don't think that's, his intent is not to not just at all. disrespect. It's right. right. to bring awareness to. And to, I mean, a protest is meant to be uncomfortable as Doug Baldwin uh, and mm. so many others in the league have continually said, like, it's not supposed to be, like, people are like, we'll do it at a different time, not during the anthem. Right. Like, that's not gonna have an impact. Right, there you right. go. <laughs> that's the point. So I wrote this open letter through the Army Times because I was getting hit up by CNN and Fox News and MSNBC, and all of them are like, come on our show, and I think they wanted me to debate this mm. issue, like, take a side, you know, mm, are you right. pro-cap or anthem? And I'm like, yeah, that's not it. That's, that's not, not it. the point. I have my own <laughs> feelings, opinions, and just like everybody should. You right, know? right. And about every issue, like we should have, we should be able to have our own. That's freedom. You know, we should have our own opinion and not have to like take a side just because we're told that you know you have to be red or blue and you got to be whatever left right. or right. So I wrote this letter, and I just said, hey, but this is my experience. This is why I feel like I feel. And at first, you know, I I, I sort of judge you on that, but you know what, like. I respect you because you're doing, you, it takes a lot of courage to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to the day, I ended it with like, I look forward to the day that you're once again inspired to stand for the flag, I'll be standing right there next to you. Mm -hmm. And you know, I signed it, De Oppresso Liber, which means to free the oppressed, that's the Special Forces motto. Sent it to the Army Times, which no one really reads, like not even in the Army <laughs> Right. Times. No offense to the Army Times. <laughs> but it went out and a lot of sports journalists and athletes and you know, just influencers, influencers generally started sharing it because they were like, I'm kind of feeling the same way. Like, why can't we just have this conversation? Like, right. Why does it have to be immediately take a side an argument? Right. Yeah, right. Like, right. This, it, like, let's let's figure this out because you meet you meet you meet cops, and then most 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 people that work in law enforcement are really good people and right. try to do the right thing every day, right. Right. and they hate when this stuff happens, happens because right. it's like it's reflects very poorly on right. them. You right. know, right. and then people right. see that badge and that uniform, and they're like. Oh, you're one of them. And he's like, no, I'm not. You're right, I'm just you know? me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just me. Like, I, I, I want to, I want to protect, and I actually want to protect and serve, which most of them do. And then, some of them don't. And also, you know, the the, the lack of appropriate training and all—that's a whole other conversation. But, right. Yep. Um, so what Cap, I think, was trying to do is improve all of that stuff. Right. That was the intention behind it. You can have your opinion about whether you think it was the right way or the wrong way, but that's that's his intent, and that's mm -hmm. the intent is what's most important to me. Mm -hmm. Um. And so he ended up reading this letter, it got to him, and he, uh, his publicist called me and was like, hey, they're playing the, the San Diego Chargers tomorrow, at the final preseason game, Cap's starting. Um, he would love to meet with you before the game, if that's possible. I know you're up in Los Angeles, if you can come down. And I was like, oh man, oh man. <laughs> I was nervous. <laughs> right? I was nervous, but I was also like, appreciative. This is a good yeah, yeah, appreciative. Yeah, yeah. grateful. Like, this is a good opportunity. To, Nate, if you're going to say something and stand for something, and, you know, speak up, you need to follow through. Right. Yeah. This don't, is the, don't this don't is the moment. This. Yeah. yeah. So I went down there and I met him and, and Eric Reed. Yep. I played with mm -hmm. them at the time at, in the lobby of the team hotel, like four hours before kickoff. And you could tell all three of us, like, very, very much like a locker room conversation, kind of, you know, a little bit jokey at times. Yeah. You yeah, know, it's a very yeah. serious matter, mm -hmm. but it's like, like well, this is, yeah. We're speaking it's heavy. Candid. It's, it's heavy. Wild. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's heavy, but it's them. conversation. Yeah. And Cap was like, and I, you know, I didn't, I didn't know it was gonna blow up like this, like this quick. This is, this is wild. But like, this is why I feel this way. And he kind of laid more stuff out, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I completely understood, and I respected not only his willingness to say that, and he was very, I will say too, he was very respectful of, of, of me and the, you know, in the, in the uh, you know, my time in the military and all that, and I appreciated that. But. Um, but you know, there's no cameras around. It wasn't a it wasn't a moment right. like that where I was I was a little nervous. Like, is this is this a yeah. uh, a media opportunity? Yeah, it's like right. a dog right. and pony right. show. This is just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just honest. And so we had this whole conversation, and he asked me at the end of it. He's like, "All right, do you think there's a way 
that I can get my point across. It's yeah. not going to offend people in the military. And I was like, I, I don't speak for the military, first right, of all. Right, right. Like, no matter what you do, some people somebody's going to be somebody, offended, right, no matter right. what. Exactly. I was like, it doesn't matter. And I was like, and I even said, honestly, if you stand now without yeah. and just they just, still there's going to be those people that <laughs> yeah. are like, wait a minute, you said you were. You were, you were all about this thing, and now you're yeah. standing. Even mm-hmm. then, I'm like that. So they're gonna have those people that are gonna be. Yep. No matter what you do, you can't, it's, it's not gonna be. A, there's no win here as far as like everybody. Can't please everybody. No. Absolutely. Not gonna be able to anyway. Exactly. So I said, look, to me, if you're asking my opinion, which he was, you know, I was like, I, I would love to see you be alongside your teammates because either mm-hmm. way, you guys don't all agree in that locker room, you know, as much as anybody. Yep. That locker room is very diverse. Very. Opinions. You, know, you don't right. even like half the guys you play with, but you still, you take a hit for them. You yep. know what I mean? You've got to line up shoulder to shoulder and like, right. yep. get this thing done together. Same in the military. Yep. You know, there's people I would take a bullet for that I can't stand mm. <laughs> I have a conversation with you. Part of the team. But I yeah. know you would do it for me. Right. And so, like, let's go. Mm. And he agreed that that was, that was important, right? So it was like, all right, we're going to be... We're going to be, uh, I should be alongside my team. Shoulder to shoulder. So just from the optics standpoint, yeah, yeah. you wanted to figure out, okay, yeah. at least if you're not standing, at least be with your teammates. But how could he yeah. do that logistically with that? <laughs> right, trying yeah, yeah. to, you know, find a win-win right. situation for everyone. Yeah, and it's tough. I mean, there is, there, I don't know if there was a, a def- definitive win there, but I said, look, if, 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 if if you're willing to do that, and he's like, he's like, but I'm not gonna, you know, I don't want to stand. I'm not gonna stand until things change. I said, I think the only thing that makes sense, the only other option really, is taking a knee. Mm-hmm. And I think that's respectful. People take a knee to pray and propose, and yeah. uh, when a player's hurt on the field, the guy's taking a knee out of respect. Like it's a very common thing. People see that as a respectful gesture. Mm-hmm. And he agreed. Uh, I thought it was, thought it was better. Mm. So he did it that night, um, and you know, I ended up standing next to him. Uh, during the anthem, and it was—I uh, mean, it was—it was powerful. I mean, it was, it was also it was also just heartening because you could hear the people booing. There was response. Right, right. I was like standing there, like, yeah. wow. Like, wow. Still, it didn't matter. It there doesn't was a matter. And no one cared. Yeah. Um, and even with that context and conversation, I think a lot of people did adjust their their feelings on kind of on both both, both sides. sides yeah. Honestly, a lot of people were like. Okay, like I, you know, I, I understand. I also do understand that um, we that we do need law enforcement. Mm-hmm. We just need to figure out how to do this better. Like how right, do we fix right. this? You know. And uh, anyway, it was. I thought it was a very powerful moment. That's awesome, and, man. Um, I was proud to stand. You know, proud to stand next to him. I don't think I would change. I get asked a lot. Would you do it different? No. I don't think I would. I don't think I would change anything. Yeah, it's a good um, moment. But. It's, yeah. it's still a topic of debate. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. It's right. a great but moment in sports. Like I said, yeah. like I said this, is, this is, that moment has been a defining moment. Yes. Yeah. In a lot of people's lives. You know, not just this country alone, but just for people that, like I said, once they got a real understanding right. and then interpreted it the way they wanted to, but understood where Cap was coming from, I think everybody got to see a different side and was able to interpret like really why he was doing it because there were so many things being said as to why he was doing it that it was just, you know, they were judging him based on things that other people were saying and not really hearing from what he was saying. But like you said, that was an 18 minute interview and they only took a little bit of an excerpt and put it out there and, and people judged him based on that which yeah. is, you know, typical, exactly. of, typical exactly. of media. So, no, we but, appreciate you coming yeah, by, man. though, man. Yeah. So tell yeah. everybody where we can find our MVP, the movie. Yeah. Emerging oh. Vets and Players, right? Emerging Vets and Players. Yeah. yeah. Man, thank you guys for having me on. Absolutely. Really, it a lot. Uh, so the movie, um, it releases on video on demand, uh, November 11th, Veterans Day. Awesome. Let's um, come around the corner. TV, yep. Amazon Prime, a lot of other places. So you can check it out there. There it is. Um, but yeah, um, okay. MVP, MVP the movie, and, and as far as the organization, mm-hmm. Merging Vets and Players, vetsandplayers.org is the website. So okay. you know vets and players. Athletes, org. vets that can utilize our program, um, you want to consider events and expansion and how you want to help us grow, go mm-hmm. to that site, reach out to us, connect, you know, 
We'd love to chat with anybody. There it is. This is Nate, Nate Boyer. Boyer, everyone. Director, Boyer. XFL, Green Beret, Nate Boyer. Thank you, brother. Nate Boyer. Thank you, my guy. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Absolutely.